This video is a prelude, a prelude to the topic of normal probability distribution and the standard normal probability distribution. So obviously, we must begin with probability distribution. Can you still recall your understanding of probability distribution? Probability distribution was introduced to you way back in grade 9. You had start in grade uh, 8, 9, and 10, and you have a part, therefore, probability distribution. So what is a probability distribution? A probability distribution describes the probabilities of all outcomes of an experiment. Okay, so that is a lot of words. That is a lot of new words. Words that you meet only in stat. So let's make a concrete example. The experiment is throwing one die and then paying attention to the numbers that appear with each throw. Of course, you know this experiment. You at least played with puzzles and board games that required you to throw a die. So the outcomes, the outcomes can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And what is the probability of each outcome? Can you still recall how it is computed? We have actually a formula for that. No, it's not the frequency method. It's the, sorry, it's the relative frequency method. Okay, so if x is your uh, outcome, the probability that an outcome x will occur is equal to the number of ways x can appear in your experiment and the size of your sample space. We call it N, capital N. In this experiment, you throw one die. So what is N? What is capital N? You only have six outcomes. So that is the sample space. So what is now the probability that one will appear in one throw? Well, there's only one way for one, for one to appear in one throw, and that is when 1 is what you see. So the probability that an outcome would be 1 is equal to 1 over 6. And it's the same for the rest of the outcomes of this experiment. Now let us level up our experiment. Let us say we will throw two dice, and we will pay attention to the sum of the numbers that appear. You know the numbers. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on and so forth, okay? This one would be the outcomes in the numbers that would appear in uh, die 1. And this one are the numbers that will appear in the second die. And so the numbers here inside your table are the sum, okay? So when it's 1, one die shows 1 and the other shows 1, so the sum is 2. Again, our uh, goal here is to show how to produce a probability distribution. So this is not yet your probability distribution. This is just a listing of the outcomes. So how shall we produce the probability distribution? Well, let us do it step by step. What is the size of our sample space? What is the total number of possible outcomes? It is, maybe you can still recall your fundamental counting principle. If one experiment has n sub 1 outcomes, and the second experiment has n sub 2 outcomes, the total number of outcomes of these two experiments is going to be n sub 1 times n sub 2. So the first experiment here is like throwing one die, die 1, and the other one is throwing die 2. So die 1 has 6 possible outcomes, die 2 has 6 possible outcomes, so all in all, the size of our sample space is 36. Now, how do you compute for the probability of an outcome? If x is an outcome, then the probability x will occur is equal to the number of ways x can happen divided by the size of your sample space. Let us say we are interested in the probability that 7 is going to appear. The sum is going to be 7. So how shall we compute for the probability that the outcome is 7? Well, we count. In how many ways will the sum of 7 appear? Well, it can be 6 and 1. 
Okay? 6 plus 1. It can be 5 plus 2. It can be 4 plus 3. Okay, so we will look at these numbers. 7, 7, 7. In how many ways can 7 occur as an outcome? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So n of 7 is 6. And the size of our sample space is 36. So the probability that 7 is going to be the sum when we roll 2 dice is 1 over 6. But this is not yet your probability distribution, okay? So we are just showing to you the outcomes and showing to you how to compute for the probability of one outcome. How do you produce the probability distribution? Well, let's do it with the help of a table. So we can show the probability distribution through a table. In the first row, you have the outcomes. The outcomes are the sums. 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth until 12. 12 is this one. And that can happen only in one way. When one dice shows 6 and the other dice shows 6 also. 6 plus 6 is 12. So we shall now show the probability of each outcome. So how about when the outcome is 2, when the sum is 2? Okay, so we shall use our relative frequency method. So 2 can appear only in one way. So it's going to be 1 over 36. How about 3? 3 as a sum can appear in two ways. Okay, maybe the first die is uh, 2, the second die is 1. Or the second die is 2, the first die is 1. In both instances, their sum is 3. So again, it's n of 3, the number of ways 3 will occur over the sample space, which is 2 over 36. How about 4? What is the probability that in a roll of 2 dice, 4 will appear? Or the sum of the 2 dice is going to be 4? Well, you count this. 1, 2, 3. So again, relative frequency method, it's going to be 3 over 36. So on and so forth until you get to the last outcome, 12. So you can show a probability distribution through a table. In a probability distribution, you are showing the probability of each outcome in an experiment. And that is what we did here. But you know what? You can also show the probability distribution of an experiment using a probability histogram. How do you produce this probability histogram? Let us go back to Excel. I already prepared our data here. So this is the outcomes. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And these are the probabilities of those outcomes. Okay, so how do you produce the probability histogram? Highlight your data. Again, insert charts. Now, I think there are teachers who would not agree that this is how the probability histogram ought to look like. I think some, uh, some teachers would uh, advise students to, to show a histogram in such a way that there are no gaps in the numbers in your horizontal line and there are no gaps in the bars. Okay, so how do we do that? So look at what I will do. Okay, look at that. Quick layout. So I will choose quick layout. No, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. How about this one? Again, no. This one, I think this one will produce it. Yes. Okay, so you want to show distinctively each of the bars. So how do you do it? Look at this. Look at this. Outline. So I want Excel to show the line of each a polygon, of each bar. So I will just click and I will choose black. So you can show a probability distribution in, in two or more than two ways. You can show it through a table such as this, or you can show it through a probability histogram.